Hello, today we have George Ng, the CEO of Processa Pharmaceuticals, trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker PCSA. George, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. For our viewers who may not be familiar with Processa, can you start by giving us a high-level overview of the company and what makes your approach to cancer therapy different? Great. Yes. So Processa Pharmaceuticals, as you mentioned, we're a NASDAQ publicly traded company. We specialize in developing next generation therapies in terms of we take existing uh, cancer therapies and drugs and we make them better. And that's essentially what we do. And we do it via, via uh, changing or altering the metabolism and or the distribution of the active cancer agent. Your lead program, PCS 6422, what is NGC CAP and why is it generating excitement in the oncology space? Yeah, so PCS6422 is our drug, and it, it, it's given in combination with capsaibine. Now, capsaibine is a widely used known uh, chemotherapy uh, drug uh, used in first line, second line, third line, fourth line. But it has its problems and issues uh, similar to other chemotherapy drugs, uh, high toxicity levels, lots of side effects. And so what we do is when given in combination, we address those issues. Uh, we bring down the toxicities. We actually make the drug more effective. Now, recently, Processa announced a strategic portfolio review. What prompted that, George? And what do investors need to know about how you're realigning your pipeline? Sure. So we, you know, the team is made up of largely experienced, you know, professionals in this area. And I'm an investor in Processa, you know, as well. So, you know, we believe in increasing and adding shareholder value no matter what we do. So we did the portfolio review because, you know, we're taking deliberate steps to focus our resources on programs with the highest potential for clinical success and commercial impact. So we did a review to take a look at our assets and hence why, for one of them, we found it, uh, you know, too challenging to proceed in terms of cost resources to get to a meaningful milestone. And so hence we decided to give the asset back, but we're then prioritizing our efforts on other assets that we deem high value. And we think that could add a lot of shareholder value with, with upcoming milestones. Yeah, speaking of that, you recently signed that potentially transformative deal with Intact Therapeutics. This one is around PCS12852. George, tell us about that partnership and what does it mean for Processa and your shareholders? Yes, so we're very excited about this partnership with Intact Therapeutics. Uh, you know, the, you know, the, the financials are great in terms of there's a potential total deal value of about $454 million. Uh, we also are getting a low team percent uh, in the royalty, but also we're also getting a 3.5% equity stake into the company as well. And what really is making this exciting is who's involved with Intact Therapeutics. Uh, one of the uh, early, early or the earliest investor and actually who's actively involved in, in Intact is Lauren Johnson. And, you know, he's a very well-respected person in the GI gastro you know, gastro space, uh, you know, professor and researcher at Stanford, but more importantly, he was a co-founder of Salix Pharmaceuticals, which was at one time uh, the largest uh, GI-focused pharmaceutical company in the world before it was sold to Vertex, uh, you know, for, you know, for billions. And he, and he has had been looking for a product like our PCS12852. So, in his hands and in tax hands, uh, we th you know we think there could be a lot of value uh, you know, derived from their involvement in this partnership. All right, George, small cap investors, of course, they're always looking to leadership. Tell us about the leaders of your company. Sure. So this is a very very experienced uh, you know leadership team, uh, you know, with uh, decades of experience. And it was co-founded by Dr. David Young, who leads our development team. And you know his background is in drug development, uh, and he's done so successfully to the tune of th you know thirty regulatory approvals. You know today, uh, this was the same team that was at Quest Quest Core when 
he was on the board and they were having problems getting Athar approved, he actually stepped into a more development role and led development there. And he was able to get Akthar approved uh, within a year without having to do any additional studies with not just for one indication, but 18 in, you know, additional indications. And that propelled Questbor from about 50 cents a share when he joined to all the way to over $100 a share when it was acquired by Mallinckrodt for $5.6 billion. So this is the team that leads development. We have experience all across the board from our CFO to the rest of management. Now, small cap investors are always also wanting to understand runway, your upside. What are you thinking about when it comes to capital allocation, partnerships, and of course, non-dilutive funding going forward? Yes, as I mentioned previously, I'm an investor myself, and uh, I've taken companies all the way through from uh, preclinical, clinical to commercial, from private to public. And so I'm very aware of, you know, increasing and adding uh, to, you know, adding shareholder value. And so we as a team, we're going to, we are going to try our best to do so and do so in a non-dilutive way. Hence why we did the intact therapeutics deal. We also have another uh, non-oncology asset, a legacy asset in the renal and nephropathy space that we're very excited about that now we went from not having a, a you know really a you know a drug that didn't have much value to now uh, due to regulatory changes possibly having a phase three ready uh, drug and so we're in the process of uh, right now uh, you know doing doing or preparing a study protocol for a phase three study and we we'll, and we should be meeting with the FDA you know, later on this year in about a couple of months. And with that, we would all, we would then have a phase three ready asset that we could then partner and collaborate uh, with other, you know, companies. And so right now we are in the process of doing that. We're talking to several companies uh, and, you know, for partnership and hopefully that will bring in non-dilutive funding. And we're looking to, uh, you know, for other sources of um, funding and monetary uh, means as well. And the intact deal will also you know, through that deal, you know, we should also have some upcoming milestones and payments from that deal as well. You know, George, I've had the great pleasure of speaking to you at length offline. You are very excited about the essential value proposition of Processa. And just tell us, you as an investor yourself, why should other investors take an interest in Processa right now? Sure. Well, as I mentioned, it starts with management, and we have a experienced management team that have taken many companies through uh, to meaningful milestones. Uh, we also have, you know, multiple assets in our, uh, you know, you know, in our pipeline. So it's not just a, you know, one binary event. So we have multiple shots on goal, and then on top of that, I believe that we have a de-risked approach in that uh, we have, at, you know, our approach is taking um, already known cancer therapies and making them better. So we're not having to reinvent the wheel as opposed to some other companies where, yeah, it may be exciting, groundbreaking work, but you have to actually prove that it works. We're not, ha you know, we don't have to prove that these therapies work. We just have to show that we can make them better and safer, right? So, so it's more of a de-risk proposition. And also because we have some near-term catalysts coming up as well um, with, uh, you know, as I mentioned, you know, PCS 499. So if the FDA uh, gives the go ahead on a phase three study, now we went from nothing to uh, instantly a phase three asset that we can really partner out and collaborate with other companies. Uh, and then, uh, you know, then with regards to our lead asset, PCS 6422, uh, we are currently in phase two right now. We had really great phase one B results, 67% uh, response rate. We had uh, up to 11 months of progression-free survival, and we only had a 6% incidence of hand and foot syndrome, which is the most debilitating side effect of capsidabine, right? And uh, where normally in capsidabine, it's 50% of all patients uh, get you know, hand and foot syndrome. And ours is only a mild case. So, uh, yeah, so we have some upcoming, you know, so with our phase two, we anticipate fishing enrollment in the second half of this year for the first part to get to the interim and we should have our you know beginning to release you know interim data uh, in the second half of this year.
So we have some other milestones coming up as well, but those are the near term ones. And so I think all in all, uh, you, know, th- you know, there's a lot to uh, like about Processa. George, it's been a great pleasure speaking with you and you definitely have a fascinating story at Processa. Thank you for telling us your story. Thank you.